Well, scientists at the University of Queensland may have found the unlikely key to protecting the Great Barrier Reef from one of its most dangerous coral predators, the crown of thorns, starfish. Scientists hope the breakthrough will rebalance the predator ecosystem. And here to tell us more is the bloke who knows all about the Great Barrier Reef, geophysicist, adjunct fellow, of course, at the IPA, brilliant organisation, the IPA, ipa.org.au, check it out. Peter Ridd. Peter, great to see you. Now, uh, apparently we've got a story about crown of thorns and crabs. You're the reef man. No one can tell us more about it than you. Fire away. Well, everybody knows that crown of thorns starfish are supposedly destroying the Great Barrier Reef. They've been telling us for 60 years. Uh, they said in the 60s the, the reef would be gone by the 70s, completely eaten up, and that kept on going. Uh, we presently spend tens of millions of dollars a year uh, trying to destroy uh, crown of thorns starfish. But this new research uh, has finally been done that's demonstrating that there's these little uh, red decorated clams that eat the, the tiny little uh, larvae of the crown of thorns starfish. Now, this shouldn't be a surprise because crown of thorns are a natural Queensland animal and, of course, they're a predator's. What is a surprise, it's taken 60 years of these scientists to finally do the research on the predators of the uh, starfish, and they really should have been doing this before they started blaming farmers for killing the Great Barrier Reef with, crap, with their nutrients, which supposedly causes the starfish plagues. James. That's fascinating. Um, but is there a problem, a potential danger with these crabs that if you introduce them, that you could wind up having, like you've had so many other times, uh, with other attempts to use this sort of thing, you know, I'm thinking about you know, rabbits and all sorts of other things, um, that you wind up with another problem down the road from these crabs? Uh, no, because these are Queensland crabs. These are living out there already. So, you know, obviously, when a, a crown of thorns starfish releases literally millions of larvae, most of those are going to be eaten. In fact, all but probably one of them will be eaten by something or other. And this research has just found that this particular crab is particularly good at it. Mm. There will doubtless be dozens of other animals that are also eating these starfish. Remember, these are natural, and we know that they've been in plague proportions since for thousands of years because we can actually look at the skeletons deep down in the cores of the, of the reef. Rita? Fascinating stuff. Why is there this uh, determination to see the Great Bar Barrier Reef in peril, these doomsday scenarios mm. that we continuously, whether it's blaming the farmers, whether it's uh, climate change, it seems like, you know, so many people think the Great Barrier Reef is about to die. Initially, it was because, you know, when you see a whole lot of the reef that's been eaten by the starfish, and they can eat a whole reef in about a year. That looks terrible and people can be very emotional about it and they had the best of interest in those days. But now it's become the way you get funding, uh, unfortunately, mm -hmm. and there's too much emotion involved. So that's a, a fundamental problem we've got. So, Peter, um, so here we get, as you say, we've, we've finally done some research 60 years on to show that the uh, crown of uh, uh, starfish, aren't, the crown of thorn starfish, are not going to destroy the reef, that the crabs, there will be a natural balance. Who'd have thought, Peter, that nature actually looks after itself? What an amazing revelation. I mean, but thank <laughs> goodness, as you say, people are doing this research rather than endlessly scaring us silly. Uh, do you think there's a kind of just moving overseas, Peter, away from the barrier reef, but in Germany, for instance, we're suddenly seeing as, uh, you know, as, as as basically the energy crisis forces up electricity bills and so on, a lot of people in Germany are now protesting against these green scare campaigns, against, uh, for example, uh, trying to ban nuclear energy. So we've seen in Germany they're starting to come out and say, hang on, slow down all this net zero stuff. Let's go back. Let's have, mm. have, have some nuclear energy. So do we think we've reached peak green doomsday mongering or, uh, or, or is there another horror sh show just around the corner? I think we're seeing the end of the whole doom uh, science problem, actually. I mean, in Germany, it's amazing. They decided to shut down their nukes after the Fukushima disaster, which was messy, but killed one person. Uh, Japan's actually going back. They're starting up all their nukes and building some new ones. In Germany, despite the fact the government wants to close down their last three remaining nukes, 65% of the population want to keep them, 65%. 
and only 25% or so want to shut them down. But you're also seeing in America, there was a recent opinion poll that showed that 60% of Americans think that the climate change thing is a religion and <laughs> is just there to control us. They're very smart. Now, that's a staggering, staggering statistic considering the relentless doom-mongering. But people mm. are seeing mm. through this and people are seeing through it with the Great Barrier yeah. Reef eventually as well. Rita? I, I wish I could believe you there, Professor, but I just think uh, we're going to see more doomsdays. And we've been seeing it for decades. And, and every time it's proved spectacularly wrong, they double down with the next one. Um, uh, Germany is interesting, though. Uh, what about what we're doing? Do you see in our, I don't know, next 10, 20 years, Australia embracing nuclear energy or are we just so far out of the game? No, I think Australia is behind because we haven't seen the real energy shock that the Germans, the British or even the Japanese are feeling because we've still got enough uh, there. And really, nuclear for us doesn't make a huge amount of sense because we've got so much coal and gas. But I think that you're seeing, you're seeing peak lunacy in America, in Germany. It hasn't percolated through to the power elites. The power elites uh, still are going ahead because it's not affecting them high energy costs but it is affecting the poor people and the middle class people and they are starting to turn. So I think you should have a lot more optimism perhaps, Rita.